Hey guys, this is Fei Wu from Face World Media. This is a special video because here I want to talk about PPP, which is the Paycheck Protection Program. Now, this came about April 4th. Around the same time, there is another loan for small business in the US called the EIDL, which stands for Economic Injury Disaster Loan Assistance. And that's from the SBA. That is US Small Business Administration. Now, for the focus of this video, I'm going to really talk a lot more about PPP. The reason is my audience, which is you guys here on YouTube, a lot of you guys are independent contractors, uh, indie creators, creative entrepreneurs, including fitness and dance instructors, coaches, etc. So I really wanna make this message relevant to you guys because many of you will be uh, or have already been impacted by the coronavirus. So definitely take advantage of these new laws, new benefits, and small business loans. And there is such a thing as forgivable rules, which means if you spend this money that if you get approved, then uh, you don't have to give the money back if you follow the rules specifically. So in this video, after watching so many here on YouTube, what I wanna do is relate this video to fitness, uh, dance, instructors, entrepreneurs, coaches, uh, so that you can take advantage of it. Now, with that said, PPP and EIDL are open to other people, including sole proprietor, self-employed, Uber driver. So it's really open to a lot of people. And if you are a sizable business, uh, the loan could be quite significant. However, we're not referring to those companies right now. Uh, for example, PPP is available to companies up to 500 uh, employees. I don't think many people watching this video or on my channel fall into that category. Most of us basically hire ourselves. And uh, for example, for me at Face World Media, we are an LLC, but also specifically a single member LLC. That's possibly a lot of you guys as well. Or if you run the gym, you do employ instructors. Um, you know, most likely you probably have under 20 or under 10 employees. So this also applies to you. Well, the reason why I don't want to combine uh, or focus both on PPP and EIDL is it's actually quite complicated because EIDL sort of cancels PPP out. It doesn't mean that you can only apply to one, not the other. In fact, you could apply to both of them. At some point, you will not be able to take full advantage of both of these small business loans. So it's best to talk to someone who is an expert, such as an accountant, um, which is not my role. I am doing this video simply to share my own experience, give you guys an opportunity to see how to find a lender, most likely your bank, very easy to do. You just type in, for example, Bank of America, PPP, or JP Morgan Chase, PPP, or TD Bank, PPP, that's it. And I think it's really most convenient to get started with your own bank. They're the lenders and go from there. And what's gonna happen is these forms are relatively easy to fill out. For example, for Bank of America, uh, it's about four to five pages. The questions are fairly straightforward, big font. So it's not like filing your taxes. It's not very intimidating. In fact, that's exactly what uh, PPP is appealing for is because they don't require an extensive amount of documentation, making it easy and more accessible to people. Now let's talk about how much money is there in PPP. So looks like the borrowers authorizes up to 349 billion with a B in forgivable loans to small businesses to pay their employees during the COVID-19 crisis. All loan terms will be the same for everyone. The loan amounts will be forgiven as long as the loan proceeds as used to cover payroll expenses, most mortgage interest, rent, utility costs over the eight week period after the loan is made. Employee and compensation level are maintained. Payroll costs are capped at $100,000 on an annualized basis for each employee. So after reading numerous articles and uh, also many videos on YouTube, I also discovered uh, what they call the 75 and 25% rule, which means you need to spend 70% of the money you're gonna get on the list of items that's approved and you could spend the remaining 25% on additional expenses occurred for your business. So let's take a look at some of the examples for the 75%. I think you'll like what you hear. 
because 75% includes not only payroll, but for you and your employee, by the way, if you are self-employed, again, this totally applies. If you are the only payroll person for your business, whether you are a sole proprietor or you're like me, small business, single person LLC, this works too. So 70% includes vacation pay, medical, parental, sick leaves, family, and for self-employed, this also includes insurance, including premiums, uh, such as your business insurance. Uh, also, employee matches, if you have 401k and retirement benefits, simple IRA, SEP, uh, state and local taxes. Now, what I also really love about this is when I said medical, that means your health insurance. So as a self-employed person, you have to pay for your own health insurance which can be a sizable cost. You know, for me, for example, I believe it's around $150 to $200, and that's alone, that by itself is $2,400 a year. Now, let's talk about the 25%. Again, I'm really summarizing the information in the description below. I included a bunch of videos I found on YouTube I really like, as well as articles you should really read. I know some of them are really dry. And do talk to an accountant if you work with a professional, which I do recommend. Um, but I'm summarizing at a very high level from what I find most helpful for people like us, okay? So the 25% that you can also spend on includes lease agreement prior to uh, February 15th, utility for business, uh, may not cover interest on debt. So uh, document everything is next step. So let's say once you get the money, whether it's five grand or 10 grand, which I'll do a quick calculation and provide you with a few scenarios in, in a second, is you wanna document everything, means keep the receipts, and the simplest thing for me that I love to do, I don't like paper at all, is that I would recommend, and this is me hearing from an expert, is to open up a separate business account. So you got your regular business checking, saving, now open up entirely different account only for the purpose of PPP. That's just gonna make everything super simple. It sounds so basic, but it works. Now let's talk about how much money you might be getting. Let's do some simple math. For example, as an entrepreneur, whether you're, you know, you're teaching fitness, dance, whatever it may be. So last year in 2019, you were making on average $5,000 a month, okay? That's about 60 grand a year. And that doesn't have to be even. If you are a self-employed professional, you will notice sometimes you make four grand in January, six grand in, in February, and you know, so it may vary. What they're gonna do is take that average. So let's say on average, you make $5,000 a month. And now because of the coronavirus, since January or February, you are now making $1,000 a month. Now that's a significant jump. So what they're asking for you to put down as the salary is the salary from 2019. That is $5,000 times 2.5. Do the math real quick. It's $12,500. Okay, that's for eight weeks. They're not gonna pay you forever. So all this will be paid up for eight weeks. So that's for eight weeks. Now that's $12,000, $12,500. That's fairly significant. So what you wanna do is put that money into a separate banking account and track everything diligently. There are a couple of scenarios that you may be wondering, okay, what is the cap of people who will not benefit from PPP? Those are the people who made from their payroll more than $100,000 last year. So now if you're in a relationship, a husband and wife each runs their own business. If the wife makes more than $100,000 last year and now she's making $50,000, she's not going to benefit from that. Now, if the husband was making $50,000 and now in 2020, he makes $20,000, we're projecting to be making that amount of money, then he can benefit right away. So that's kind of the simple, hard and fast rules for PPP. Also, people are wondering about their contractors, people you pay on 1099. So those folks are not your employees. You're not responsible for filling out or applying for PPP for them. Instead, they're contractors and they're independent and they're responsible to do this themselves. Another point that's really important to a lot of people is collaterals such as personal guarantees are not required for PPP. 
So I hope you find this video helpful. I feel like I'm not really in the right role to really teach you and tell you about these things. And I'm not here to confirm everything for you. It does require for you to fill out the application and before that to take a look at what are some of the scenarios and situations that are unique to you or talk to your accountant. But please hear me out. The money is not infinite, even though $349 billion sound like a lot of money, which it is. But again, first come, first serve. And sometimes in our creative community, these things are so rarely talked about. I actually only discovered this through a close friend of mine who's going through the process. So I want to share this video right away, uh, take advantage of it. And I really wanna see this community thrive. And um, you know, I won't be able to answer a whole lot of questions in the comments below. So please reach out to your bank, which is your lender, talk to your accountant, Regardless, get started with the process. It is not guaranteed that you're gonna be approved. There's no guarantee, but the faster you can act, the better off you will be. If I remember correctly, for small businesses, uh, including CS Corp, LLC, you can start right away as you're hearing this video. However, if you're a sole proprietor, uh, if you work for yourself without an establishment of a company, I believe that you can start doing this or applying for it starting April 10th, which is coming up in a couple of days. So thank you so much for watching. This is Fei Wu and Face World Media. I'm here to help creative entrepreneurs like yourself to really celebrate and live your creative and financial freedom. And that's why I'm recording videos like this. In future videos, you will see and learn a lot about live streaming, uh, how to leverage all the tools that we have right now to work from home and still engage with a thriving audience and tribe please hit the subscribe button. Even better, the bell is really important so that you can be notified when another video goes up and I will see you very soon.